Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel and welcome to Wisconsin and my childhood home. If you didn't see my last video where I sat down and I designed out this next project, let me catch you up real quickly. I am home for the next few weeks to tackle a small little powder room makeover for my mom. And I am so excited to tackle this project because this bathroom has looked the same. My entire life. So this girl is in desperate need of a little refresh. And I'm also excited because this is such a small little bathroom that this project shouldn't take that long. And uh, my real goal is to finish this as quickly and efficiently as possible so that I can spend a majority of my time on a paddleboard in the middle of a lake. So with all of that being said, let's jump into it and let me introduce you to the space and what needs to happen. Welcome, well, welcome to the bathroom. I told you, she's small. Like I can touch from one side to the other, front to back, side to side. Yeah, it's not very big in here. Also, this bathroom is off of a kind of like back hallway space. So it's very tight to even film in here. So I'm gonna do my best. And even though this bathroom is small and I can't change the layout because you know, the pipes are where the pipes are, I can still do a lot to totally transform this space. And there are a few things about this bathroom, because this has looked the same my entire life, that has really, really annoyed me. First thing that I really find annoying about this bathroom is that this like mirror medicine cabinet that's right behind me is so big that it can't be centered over the sink which is annoying. And then there is a towel rack right over here that is not centered over the toilet. So today I can't wait to take these two things down and never put them up again. Also, the other thing I don't like is this outdated beadboard. Also that beadboard stops at like a nice little kind of hip height. And so it really draws your eye down instead of drawing your eye up and making this small bathroom feel or seem a little bit bigger. So my plan for today is to get this bathroom fully cleared out. And I forgot to mention that I'm actually going to have some professional help for this project. My uncle is a professional master plumber. So he is going to be coming later today to take out the sink and take out the toilet. And then when I'm ready for him, he's gonna come back and put in the new vanity and faucet and put in a new toilet. So already that is a huge weight off my shoulders because that would be very hard for me to figure out, but very easy for him to get done. So I am going to clear out what I can clear out and then wait for my uncle and also go and run and grab some supplies that I'll need for tomorrow to get started to work on the walls. So let's get started guys. <laughs> Okay guys, while I wait for my uncle to show up later today to take the sink and the toilet out, I'm running out to grab the supplies I need and guys, I get to go to my favorite home improvement store, Menards. Ugh, if I lived closer to a Menards, I'd be the happiest little camper. My uncle came, of course, yesterday and took out the toilet and the sink. And obviously not everybody likes to be filmed, so I kind of just like stayed out of his way, let him do his thing. And uh, now I can get to work. So step one for today is to remove this old tongue and groove board. And I am so excited to remove this stuff. I have never seen this bathroom without this like tongue and groove beadboard on the walls. So she's coming down today. Mm -hmm. 
Okay guys, yay! The bathroom is fully demoed. So my next step is to get rid of this lovely little texture that is on the drywall. Um, this texture is called knockdown. And some people don't consider knockdown to be outdated, but at this point, a lot of people do consider knockdown to be outdated. I am in the category of thinking knockdown is pretty outdated, so I wanna get rid of that texture. So what I'm gonna do is start off by doing just a light sanding over all of the walls and then I can go in and do a lovely little skim coat of some joint compound to get rid of that texture. And because I'm doing shiplap in here and I'm having the shiplap actually come up pretty high, I only really have to focus on the top part of the walls and the ceiling. I think I determined that I want the shiplap to come up around five and a half feet high. So I'm gonna try to really focus on like the top three feet of the wall. So I'm gonna do my absolute favorite thing now, which is sanding. I just love it so much. <laughs> and uh, then we can do a lovely little skim coat and hopefully that should get rid of the texture. I'm not sure what I have to do so that when I use joint compound, it's not so messy. <laughs> I feel like every time I do any kind of drywalling, I always make a giant mess. <laughs> but you know what? Oh well, it'll look good in the end. So while I wait for that joint compound to dry, I'm gonna get started cutting down some of this shiplap and getting it into the bathroom. Now I'm not sure what I need to do to work it around the corners. So I'm just going to cut down a few pieces get them moved inside and see what I have to do from there. So this first panel that I'm gonna be installing is this back panel right here because I have to do some cutouts to work around these pipes. I've got a pipe down over here that I've got to work around. Um, so this is going to definitely be by far the hardest panel I'm gonna have to install. Also, <laughs> I happen to have left my absolute favorite tool at home, which is such a bummer. I left my multi-tool at home, so I'm gonna have to do this with my jigsaw. So hopefully it goes okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm really not sure what happened here and why this square is so big. Um, but it's okay, we won't see it once the vanity is in. So it's like no big deal. Um, so now that I have these pieces cut out, I can actually get this panel attached to the wall. So I'm gonna add some construction adhesive to the back of this thing and then I'll use my brad nailer to further attach it to the wall. Okay, so I have the back panel in and I have one side panel in. And before I move on to installing that third full panel, I have to cut down that specific piece for the back wall so that I can complete the back wall before putting in this third panel. Guys, hello. I don't have my coffee in my hand, so I feel a little out of place. I need my coffee. 
<laughs> um, so now that the ship lap is done and attached to the walls, I'm going to work on the last few pieces that I need to get cut down and attached to the walls. So that would be the baseboards for the bottom of the wall. And then I have to get the chair rail piece cut down to go on top of the ship lap. And then from there, it'll be cleanup, sanding and painting. So I'm going to get my miter saw set up so that I can cut down these pieces. Okay, so now that the trim and the shiplap is all done, now comes my absolute favorite step, the cleanup process. So I'm gonna use some caulk to fill in any gaps in the trim, fill in any weird gaps with the shiplap and things like that. Once that's done, then I can move on to sanding down the top part of the wall where there's drywall and the ceiling. And once the cleanup process is all done, I can get to painting. So I'm really hoping that this cleanup process doesn't take too long. Sanding drywall is like the worst job in the world. <laughs> I hate it so much. Right now, I currently kind of can't tell what the walls look like because there's a color variation. So the walls actually for the most part are smooth, but because there's this color variation, you can still see that knockdown texture. So I don't know what the walls look like. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do one coat of white paint. And I feel like that will help me be able to determine if I wanna do some more sanding or if I'm happy with what it looks like or if I need to sand down certain areas and things like that. So let's do it. If you are running out of dry shampoo, I highly recommend just giving your walls a good sanding because that joint compound dust works miracles. My hair has never been so textured and voluminous. And I'm a professional hairstylist, so I, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so obviously this morning I did some more work sanding down the upper half of the walls and I mainly focused on the ceiling because there was still a lot of that knockdown texture on the ceiling and I am really loving how the walls look. My original plan was to fully get rid of the texture but now that there is still a light texture it's less than the knockdown, but there's still some texture in the walls. I love it. I think it really fits the vibe that I'm going for. So this was a complete happy accident because that was not my original plan. So now that the sanding is done, I'm going to continue painting and I'm going to take a break from the upper half of the walls and the ceiling because mainly my arms just really hurt from like being up here. And I am going to start painting the shiplap and the trim that's obviously lower on the walls. And if you didn't see my last video where I designed out this space, I am going with Gloucester Sage. Gla Wait, hold on. Somebody said that I pronounced it wrong. Gla Gloucester? Gloucester Sage. That's probably not right. That's probably not how you say it, <laughs> but it is such a pretty green color and I am so excited to get some color up in here. So I'm going to start painting and then we can go from there. Understand that we get one. 
Good morning, guys. So I just finished the second coat of paint on the shiplap. And so now, for the most part, the walls are completely done. I've got a few areas to do some touch-up painting in, but beyond that, the walls are basically done, which means the hardest part of this makeover is now done. And now it's just kind of like fun little odds and ends projects. And later today, I'm very excited. I get to go pick up the vanity that I ordered for this room. If you saw my design video, you know it was kind of up in the air on whether the vanity was going to arrive on time. Do I risk it to get the biscuit? So I've been calling and calling and calling to make sure it arrived on time. Okay, it's available. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. So I get to pick that up later today and I'm so excited to unbox it and see it. But in the meantime, I am gonna change out this light. Again, if you saw my design video, you know what it looks like. But if you didn't, I went with like this gold shell light from World Market. And it's actually a little bit bigger than I anticipated it being, but it's okay. I kind of like love the size. It will really fill the space up and look super dope and be such a statement light in this bathroom. So I'm gonna go figure out how to turn off this circuit and uh, change this light out. It's a rainy, rainy day today, but I just went and picked up the vanity and I really want to see what it looks like in the space. I'm going to have to move it out of the space to like clean the floors and clean up and everything, but I really want to see what it looks like. So I'm going to unpack it and get it moved inside so that I can see what it looks like. Guys, it's a sad day. I'm so incredibly sad. This vanity is not gonna work. It's too big. <sighs> I knew this project was going too well, you know? I knew it. something was bound to happen. Something was bound to happen. I really am sad that this is the thing that is not gonna work. <laughs> when I designed and planned out this project, um, my mom sent me the measurements of the old sink, which was 25 inches. So I thought that meant I could get a 25 inch vanity. But because the old sink was a pedestal sink that kind of curved in, it worked perfectly around the toilet. But because obviously this is a full on vanity and cabinet, it doesn't curve in and it's too big for the space because it doesn't leave enough room for a toilet, which I feel like is kind of important to have in a bathroom. <laughs> so I frantically got online last night to look for a vanity. I found one that is 18 inches wide. Unfortunately, I am losing a marble top, which is very, very, very sad. It's not gonna have the classy marble look that I was going for, but I feel like there also is an upside to this new vanity. One, the upside is it's skinny enough so it should work in this space. That's a large upside. And then the other thing is, is this vanity actually is a lot darker than it looked online. I loved the marble top, but I wasn't loving how dark this vanity was. And I think this new vanity is actually that like light wood look that I am going for. So um, I'm going to regather my thoughts, think through what my next steps are um, while I wait for this new vanity to arrive. And then I of course have to go return this vanity. So I'm gonna rally, I'm gonna get this project back on track and I will be back when I'm back. Okay, so I had a whole other plan. I was just about to sit down and do another project for the bathroom, but this vanity just arrived two days early. So I really wanna get this unpacked, move it into the bathroom and see how it looks and see if it's gonna work. Cause if it's not gonna work, I literally don't know what I'm gonna do. So, so fingers crossed this works. Please work. How do I open this? Come on. Please work. They really pack up these things. I appreciate it, because then it doesn't get damaged. Please be the light color I'm looking for. <gasps> it is, it's lighter. Okay, we're liking the color so far. 
dope. How do I get this out of here? <laughs> Don't you know that I'm frantic? Oh no. Guys, this whole thing is damaged and that is not from me moving it. Ooh, this vanity is really gonna be like the bane of my existence, isn't it? Okay, I'll be back. I kinda wanna just move it in to see how it looks, but yeah, this whole thing's damaged. I might have stopped and stress ate a corn dog. <laughs> uh, that's like three this week. Okay, I had one last week and I had two this week. I like corn dogs. And then when you get a corn dog kids meal, you get a free scoop of ice cream. Okay guys, so I have a plan with the vanity, but I am going to explain all of that when I get to that project. So for today, I am gonna get back to my original plan, which was making some art for this bathroom. A lot of times I just don't have the time to make art for my bedroom or like room makeovers, but I figured I have a little bit of time that I think I can do some quick paintings. So yesterday I went antiquing, I got this frame and I got these two small frames. And I also changed a little bit of my plan for the bathroom. Originally I had some artwork above the toilet, but now I have switched that to floating shelves and I'm gonna do a piece of art across from the toilet. So that will be this frame. And then I'm planning on putting these two frames on those floating shelves. So I'm gonna get to work. I'm gonna try to keep these relatively simple and easy, but we'll see what I can come up with. <laughs> Did I have a plan going into these paintings? No, <laughs> no I didn't. My mind was kind of on the whole vanity situation, but as I worked on this first step of taping up the frames and gessoing over the old paintings, I could come up with a game plan. For this large frame, I decided to do a classic landscape. You can't go wrong with a landscape painting. And to make this easy on myself, I went with an impressionist style to this painting. Look at me throwing out some art terms. But to me, an impressionist landscape just kind of means a looser depiction of a landscape. And within that looser depiction, it doesn't have to be super accurate, making it a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. And if you've ever wanted to try painting a landscape and you never have, you want to start with the thing that is furthest away from you, which in a landscape is usually the sky, and you work your way forward. I did not stick with that for this first painting because I kept covering up areas because I just didn't know what I wanted this painting to look like and I would just cover up things because I didn't like the way they looked. But in the end, we eventually got there and I'm pretty happy with how this first painting turned out. I think it does have that impressionist style where the further away you are from the painting, it looks more like a landscape and the closer you get, the colors get more muddled and it just looks like a bunch of blobs of paint on a canvas. And if you saw my mom's bedroom makeover, you know she has an obsession with swans from her years of being a ballet dancer so I figured I gotta give my mom some swans and I have been painting and drawing animals for a very long time so I was pretty confident that I could quickly whip together a decent swan painting and again I went with that looser style not trying to be super accurate and I'm pretty pleased with how these swans turned out and for the third painting I just went back to a landscape you can never have too many landscapes landscape paintings, stuck with those moodier tones like the first one, but just of course made it a really different landscape. And that completes these three quick and easy paintings. The two small ones took me like 30 minutes to an hour to do, and the big one took me two hours because I kept changing my mind on what I wanted it to look like. Okay guys, this is actually where I'm gonna be ending part one. No, I was not planning on having to break up this makeover into two parts, but because of this whole vanity situation, it has put me in a little bit of a pickle and I am now staying in Wisconsin for an additional week to try to finish up this bathroom. And after searching and searching and searching online, 
I have come to the conclusion that I am building a custom vanity for this bathroom. So make sure you guys come back next week to see how I finish off this bathroom, build this custom vanity, and see everything come together. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.